The Quiz Kid, brought to you by the makers of Alka-Seltzer and one-a-day brand vitamins. Here's the Lottie Dog question. What three explorers had last names beginning with La, D, and Da? That's your first question, Quiz Kid, Lottie Da. And you listeners at home might as well rack your brains on it, too. Then if you get the right answer before the children do, why, just send it along via mental telepathy. And now here they are, the Quiz Kids. Ordinarily about here, I introduce that cheerful character, Joseph Q. Kelly. But inasmuch as Joseph is making like a cowboy out in Cheyenne, Wyoming right now, I'll tell you what we're going to do, folks. We have a double header on our schedule today, two chief quizzers on tap. One of them is our own quiz kid, Naomi Cook, who will take charge of the class during the second question period. But we start things rolling with a man you know very well, especially you farm folks. For some 17 years, you've heard him open the National Farm and Home Hour with his cheery greeting, It's a beautiful day in Chicago. Yes, it's the chief quizzer himself, Everett Mitchell. Thank you, Bob Murphy, and hello, everyone. Well, I confess I'd feel more familiar talking about silos and alfalfa rather than Shakespeare and algebra, but, well... It's a good thing, Ev, that you learned a lot about trees on the farm and home hour, because if I know the quiz kids, you are going to be out on a limb at least once today. Robert! <laughs> You're so encouraging. Well, it's time to get acquainted with these youngsters. Joel? I'm Joel Kupperman. I'm 11 years old and 17 to vote school of Scott Fagona. Sparky? I'm Sparky Will Fishman. I'm 7 years old. I go to Bradwell School in Scott Rennie? I'm Rennie Templeton. I'm 12 years old, and I go to the 8th grade at the Kenwood School in Chicago. Lonnie? I'm Lonnie Lundy. I'm 11 years old, and will be in the 7th grade at the Lincoln School in Park Ridge, Illinois. And uh, here's the young lady with whom I have something in common. It's the first time for both of us on Quiz Kids. Joan? My name is Joan Ulrich. I'm 14, and I'll be a sophomore at Andrew Jackson High School in Miami, Florida. Mm-hmm. Well, now, perhaps you folks are wondering how little Naomi uh, happens to be chief quizzer along with me today. When the quiz kids were down in Miami, Florida, last January, a contest was held to pick Miami's quiz kid. And Joan uh, was a close runner-up. And so when folks found out that she was going to be here in Chicago on vacation, well, they just naturally invited her over to help out and... Uh, I'm certainly happy to have her with me today because, believe me, I need her. Well, now back to that first question from Mrs. Donald Bond of Palos Park, Illinois. That uh, Lottie Da question. What three explorers has last names beginning with La, D, and Da? And by the way, all of the, uh, practically all of the hands are up, but Lonnie, I think you had your hand up first. Uh, La, D, and Da. Well, the La is LaSalle. Right. The D is De Soto, mm -hmm. and the Da is the Gamma, Vasco de Gamma. Well, say, they're all right. Yes, sir, they're all right. Absolutely. Thank you very, very much, Ronnie. Now, for sending in that first question, uh, Mrs. Donald Bond of Pillars Park, Illinois, gets a Zenith portable radio from the makers of Alka-Seltzer. Now, of course, if you children had missed it, instead of the portable... She would have received the big $250 Zenith console model, a radio phonograph combination. All right, let's go along here now. I have the second question. Here's the math problem that's been hanging around for a couple of weeks, but uh, for obvious reasons, nobody on the staff wanted to bring it up until Joe Kelly went off on a vacation. <laughs> also, to avoid hurting Joe's feelings... We wanted to wait until uh, we had an older board uh, than we've had the last, last few weeks. Today, the average age of our five quiz kids is 11 and one-fifth years. Now, uh, Joe Kelly's age, and I hope he isn't listening, is 46. <laughs> and Agnes M. Scott of Seattle, Washington, wants us to assume that we're going to increase the size of the class to six quiz kids. And she wants to know how old the sixth quiz kid would have to be to raise the average age of the quiz kid to Joe Kelly's present age. Aha, uh -huh, Joel has his hand well, up. Joel? Uh, the average, well, the average age of Mr. Kelly is 
20, uh, is 46, rather. Uh, so 46 times 5 is 230, and uh, 56, two thir 56 from 230 is uh, uh, 174. So therefore, it has to be 174 years old. Well, it's a good try, but not uh, not right yet, Joe. You want to try again? Uh, all right. Well, uh, could you repeat the question, please? Well, uh, <laughs> all right, here we go. Uh, Joe Kelly's age is 46. And uh, suppose uh, we're going to increase the size of the class to six quiz kids, and we want to know how old the six quiz kid would have to be to raise the average age of the quiz kids to Joe Kelly's present age. Joel's uh, hand well, is up again. All right. Well, Joel. six times forty-six is two hundred and seventy-six, and two hundred and seventy-six minus fifty-six would be two hundred and twenty years old. Absolutely right. Yes, sir. Absolutely right. Well, that's fine. All right, Joel. That's fine. Now, uh, just listen carefully to this rather tricky question from Jeanette J. Johnson of Minneapolis, Minnesota. I shall give you two words that describe a famous person, and the first letter of each of the words makes the person's initial. Now, uh, you should name the person after I've told you the profession. For example, able lawyer would be Abraham Lincoln. Now, who would these be? The first question, unsurpassed general. Rennie, I think you had your, uh, your hand up first. Well, I'd be Ulysses Grant. Ulysses Grant, that's absolutely right. And who was U U Ulysses Grant? Oh, he was the commander of the Northern Forces in the Civil War. Absolutely right. All right, now ready for the second question. Marvelous chemist. Uh, Joan? Madame Curie. Well, bless your heart, absolutely right. Or Marie Curie. Well, Marie Curie. Fine, both are right. <laughs> and for the third question, are you ready? Everybody's ready and everybody's tense. Technological electrician. That's a mouthful. Joan? Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison. Absolutely right. <laughs> well, believe me, the boys and girls are really on the beam today. They're really sharp, and I'm going to have to watch out. Now I have a question that I've been waiting for because uh, it's about the farm and farming, and it's one thing that I know I know more about than you quiz kids. Because uh, you've always lived in the city. And I suspect that quite a few of our studio audience came from the city, too. So I'm going to hold the right answer up on a card for them to see. Now, you kids won't get a single glimpse at it. You'll just have to guess. The question from Agnes Bryan, who lives on a farm near Wheeling, Indiana. Ready? If you were raising a mother cow, at what age would you expect her to have her first calf? All right, Sparky, let's hear from you. you... I didn't have my hand up. Well, I know, but... Uh, all right. <laughs> I thought maybe you knew. Okay. Uh, who had their hand up first, Rennie or Joel? Rennie? Well, I'd say about five years. About five years? Yes, sir. Well, it's a good try. Joel? About two, two years. About two years. Well, you're getting a little warm. Uh, Lonnie? Well, I think it's between two and three years. Between two and three. Well, we're guessing good. Joan? Well, I'll take a guess. Everybody else is. I'll say about a year and a half. About a year and a half. Well, no, you're certainly rushing that, that calf. Uh, <laughs> Joel? Well, I don't know. Uh, when I was on my cousin's farm, a uh, calf uh, became a cow at one year. So I'd imagine uh, that, uh, just went, that it'd be about one year. Well, one year. One year. Well, it, you've all tried, but uh, nobody's hit it yet. Lonnie, do you want to take one more chance? Well, I might as well. Six months. <laughs> oh, six months. Okay. Well, I guess I'll have to give you the answer. You, uh, you missed on that one. You, you missed on that one. So, uh, now some, uh, some uh, authorities have different ideas, but uh, we'll say first between two years and four months for one breed or two and a half years, or two years and ten months. Now, uh, I'm glad you boys and girls learned something today. 
They missed on that question, didn't they? And so uh, that one was a little tough, so Alka-Seltzer gives away a big $250 Zenith radio phonograph combination. All right, uh, now, Naomi, it's up to you to be teacher, darling. So you climb right up here in my chair, and I'll turn over the question box to you. And uh, while you're doing that, Bob Murphy has a word for all the listening mothers. Well, mothers, if you have a family of live wire youngsters at home, keep this in mind. Alka-Seltzer can often lend you a helping hand. We all know it's a lot harder to keep calm and poised and patient with the children when occasional headache or acid indigestion makes the days work harder. These pesky little ailments unconsciously make you feel a little touchy and irritable. That's why it's so wise to keep Alka-Seltzer handy. Alka-Seltzer offers comforting relief, quick relief, for nervous headaches and stomach upsets. So be sure to keep plenty of Alka-Seltzer in your home. Get Alka-Seltzer today from your druggist in either the 30 or 60 cent size. And remember, when your tablets get down to four, that's the time to buy some more. Thank you, Bob. Now, friends, I'd like to introduce my fellow chief quizzer today. Little nine-year-old quiz kid, Naomi Cook. Thank you, Everett Mitchell, and hello, everybody. Well, honey, I'll bet this is the first time you folks in the studio uh, uh, ever saw a teacher with pigtails. All right, Naomi, you go ahead and conduct school now, and I'll be right here, and if you need me, you just uh, give me a little poke, and I'll answer any question or help you. This first question from Mrs. Tina Principato of Roslyn, Roslindale, Massachusetts, is going to make you boys squirm, I hope. <laughs> what would you be do? What would I be doing if I applied some guest towels? Joan? Well, if you were applying guest towels, that would mean you'd cut out a design with uh, of, of one kind of material and then sew it on with a, some kind of a stitch. I'm not so good in sewing some kind of stitch onto your guest towel. Right. <laughs> Second, what would I be doing if I piped some summer dresses? Well, Joe, you're good at math, so what do you know about it? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing at all. Lonnie, what do you know about it? Well, you're sort of putting me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, ready, honey? go ahead and try, Lonnie, if you don't, if you know it. Well, I'll call on Rennie. Uh, is it, did you say pipe them? Yes. Well, I think you'd be putting a border around the edges of uh, a border of a... Say your dress was of a dark material, your border would probably be of a light material. That's right. <laughs> Here's a hard one from William Creer of Lakeville, Connecticut. Can you give two instances in which men won the United States presidency by defeating candidates who previously had defeated them for the same office. For example, in 1796, John Adams defeated Thomas Jefferson, but in 1800, Jefferson in turn defeated John Adams. Now, can you think of two more cases like that? Joel. Uh, well, uh, after uh, Cleveland had been elected for his first term, he ran again against Harrison and lost, but four years later, he ran against Harrison and again uh, beat him. Also, Andrew Jackson, in a close fight, was beaten by John Quincy Adams, but four years later, he was made president. That's right. <laughs> Bernard Coppenhurst of Buffalo, New York, is only 12 years old. But he comes to you with what he calls a very serious question. He says his mother often meets him at school and kisses him in front of the other boys. He's at an age where such things outside the privacy of the home embarrass him. And he wants to know how he can stop his mother from kissing him on the school grounds without hurting her feelings. Rinny? Well, I think that maybe he could explain to her that... Uh, he'd meet her a little farther away from school. <laughs> Joan, 
Well, I tell you one thing he could do. I was going to say that he could take his mother aside and sort of explain, you might say, the facts of life to her and, and, <laughs> and tell her that he doesn't like that sort of thing in front of his playmates. It sort of embarrasses him. But if she, he could, you know, kind of hint around, but if she doesn't take hints, he could eat onions. <laughs> Lonnie? Well, it depends on how far he lived from school. If he lived only a short distance, he might slip out the back way and go home. Mm-hmm. But, of course, if he li- lived a great distance, his mother would have to come and pick her up, and you'd, ha- you'd just have to explain to her, or else keep, keep on being kissed. <laughs> Sparky? Well, you could just do bad work to the teacher and make you stay after school. <laughs> Joe? Well, say, if you're young enough still to be kissed by your mother, I, uh, he, he thinks he's young enough not to do the dishes or uh, make his own bed or anything. They can just lay back and relax. Well, Bernard, the quiz kids have given you uh, some good ideas. Try them out, and if they work, well, that's very good. <laughs> the United States sent three warships to Liberia to help that country celebrate its 100th birthday. Had you been aboard one of the ships, G. Raymond Eisenberg of Altoona, Pennsylvania, wants to know how you would greet the natives in their official language. Would you say, Saludos amigos? Or, Je suis enchanté de faire votre connaissance? Or, Come esta? Or just what would you say? Well, nobody's hands are up. <laughs> Joel? Well, I call translation that translated that, uh, uh, that new both English and Liberian, and I just say, uh, Happy birthday to the t- uh, translator and let him translate it. <laughs> well, Lonnie? Well, the first one is Spanish. And I think Liberia is Sp- Spanish possession, so I no. would say saludos amigos. Joel? Well, I, pardon me, but I'd like to correct uh, Lonnie. Uh, uh, Liberia is a country in Africa on the south shore of the Mediterranean. Lonnie, again? Well, yes, well, then if it doesn't belong to Spain, it belongs to France. So that would be the second one. I couldn't pronounce it again. <laughs> well, Sparky? I just have my hand up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you give up on that question? Well, Winnie's got her hand up. Well, I don't know just what percentage of the population, but I, I know that there are... Uh, were quite a few Americans in Liberia uh, <coughs> through the uh, Mediterranean operations and everything. I think some are still there. I think you might find an American and say, hello, happy birthday. <laughs> That's right. That's right, really. Well, I thought we were going to have to give a, away another radio, dear, but they finally came in there to finish and figured it out, didn't they? Yes. Now, uh, Naomi... Uh, we're going to need you on the front microphone for this next question, so you scoot right down there to be ready for it. And uh, while you're on your little feet, you can take a great big bow for doing such an excellent job as a teacher. <laughs> now, uh, tell me, Naomi, now that you've been on both sides of the question, which do you, en- do you enjoy more, uh, playing what? teacher or being a quiz kid? Well, I think I enjoy playing teacher better because I have the answers on the cards. <laughs> well, you have a point there, and I have them too, don't I? Yes, sir. Well, now, while Naomi changes from teacher to actress, Bob Murphy recites a little poem dedicated to all you career girls who are vacation-bound. Close up your typewriter. Forget that dictation. It's two weeks with pay to enjoy relaxation. Get out the old luggage, pack summery suit. If you're heading out west, take your denims and boots. Pack sun oil to ward off the peeling nose menace. Dark glasses to wear if you plan to play tennis. But wherever you go and whatever you do, remember to take Alka-Seltzer with you. I repeat, when you're starting that wonderful trip, be sure Alka-Seltzer is packed in your grip. For traveling can bring you a mournful duet of nerve-wracking headache and stomach upset. They're always annoying, and wouldn't you hate to have either of them ruin an interesting date? But with Alka-Seltzer's convenient relief, you're ready with comfort to ease up your grief. And may I remind you, there's one more sound reason to have Alka-Seltzer in sun and fun season. If you're riding or swimming or golfing all day, could be all your muscles aren't up to such play. 
Once more, Alka-Seltzer will prove mighty handy to ease up those muscles and help you feel dandy. Now, you may need comfort at four in the morn. You're miles from a drugstore, completely forlorn. Don't mail home this postcard. Alka-Seltzer, my dear, having miserable time, and I wish you were here. So those troubles I mentioned won't spoil all your fun. See your druggist today. Ask for two, not just one. Alka-Seltzer should go with you right to the station when you start for that wonderful two-week vacation. And now I will answer what I trust was a rhyme with a farewell remark. Have a wonderful time. Now, Ev, let's have that next question. Here it is, Robert. Naomi, uh, I'll take over this question because we need you to perform in it. The question is from Mr. D.E. Callahan of Lowell, Massachusetts. He was so delighted with Mrs. Nussbaum's synopsis of operas on our program last spring that he now wants to know how she would sound doing a gossip column based on opera plots. Of course, we don't have Mrs. Nussbaum with us today. So, Naomi, that's where you come in. Just do your best to let Mr. Callahan know how she would sound if she were here. And uh, you other quiz kids must try to identify the operas. All right, Naomi, let's have the first one. In this opera, the king from Ethiopia, a big chief, is being captured. He's accusing his own daughter. She is a collaborator. She wants she should want some military secrets from the enemy captain. But he is her sweetheart. In other words, Papa is wanting his kid to make like a Martha Herring. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joel, you had your hand up first. Uh, that's from Aida. You have it right. Aida is right. <laughs> Goyle, specialized type, is getting herself a fine kettle of gefilte fish, romancing with a wholesome farmer boy. She is proposing, but she is saying, Ha! Scram! So I'm not knowing you from a bagel. <laughs> the, the boyfriend, a good-hearted schnook, his mind he is losing until he is finding out he is himself an oil. High-class society, too. Then, of course, it keeps bedding bells. <laughs> La, uh, Joel? Well, I, 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 I forget the opera, but I know the plot uh, very well. Uh, the the, uh, the uh, girl is, um, uh, is sort of a uh, lady, and her name she is Henrietta, and she has a cousin, Sir Tristram, and she's tired of everything around the court, so she goes and hires her out as a servant to uh, this farmer uh, who's really the Earl of Derby, and when... She gets tired of him. She leaves him back for the court, and uh, he chases her, and he finds he, he's the Earl of uh, Derby and nobility. Uh, well, honey, that's so a good try. Uh, that's a good try. But does anyone know the name of the opera now? Joan? May I take a guess? Would it be Martha? It would be Martha, dear. Yes, it would be Martha. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, now... Last week, we assigned some special homework uh, for Lonnie, Lundy. Uh, he had to try composing a song using nothing in the melody except the three notes of the NBC chimes. Da, da, da. Now, that wasn't very good singing, Lonnie, but <laughs> at least I tried. Now, how did you get along, Lonnie? Were you able to uh, make anything at all out of them? Well, I had a little trouble, but I finally put together something. All right, Lonnie, uh, you just sit down over there at the piano and... Play it for us. And Lonnie is on his way over to the piano now and getting ready to play the three notes of the NBC chimes. All right?
Thank you, Lonnie. Well, I guess every school kid knows that when the bell rings, school's up. So you children relax while the judges add up your scores to find today's winners. The three out of five of the best report cards come back next week. But whether or not you win in the scoring, each of you gets a $100 savings bond from the makers of Alka-Seltzer to help you with the excellent future education you so obviously deserve. And now, Everett, uh, I see the judges have handed their report to you, so what are the results? Well, and I herewith read their verdict. The entire class missed only one question today. Joan Ulrich was right up among the top scorers, second in fact, but she has to go back home to Miami tomorrow, so she can't be with us next week. So not counting Joel, Joan, Joel was first, Lonnie was second, and Rennie third. So you're the winners. You will therefore be back in school next week for another brain battle with Stormy Berry, age 12, and Virginia Rose, age 12. I'm sure your regular listeners remember David Davis's violin playing when he was a pretty regular contestant in the quiz, kids' class. Well, we have a special treat for you next week. David has come from the East to make an appearance as guest soloist with the Grant Park Symphony Orchestra here in Chicago next Saturday. And he's going to stay over an extra day to be in school with us next Sunday. And you can bet that in addition to our regular schoolwork, listeners will hear some of the finest violin playing ever performed by a 14-year-old. Say, Everett, uh, what goes next week about the teacher? You know, Joe Kelly will still be on vacation, and I know you're going to be out of town, too. But who's going to be our teacher? Well, brace yourself, Bob, because you are. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I, Robert, will be the chief quizzer, you mean? <laughs> That's the deal, Robert. But don't you worry about it because you won't face the ordeal alone. You'll have lots of help. Seven-year-old quiz kid Robert Burns, baseball Bobby, will share the teacher's desk with you. Oh, brother, another double header, huh? Bob Burns and Bob Murphy. Uh, two Bob, as we say in belly old England, Bob. <laughs> well, Ev, I only hope that I do as well as you did today. Well, it was a great honor to appear on the Quiz Kids program, Bob, and I sincerely think it... It's one of the most entertaining and constructive programs on the air. Along with the National Farm and Home Hour, of course. <laughs> well, uh, Bob, that man over there with the watch is not very intrigued with our private conversation, so I guess he wants us to hurry up. So this is Everett Mitchell pinch-hitting for Joe Kelly and dismissing the Quiz Kids class until the same time next week when Bob Murphy and little Bobby Burns will share the Quiz Master's cap and gown. Goodbye, kids. Good night, Mr. Mitchell. Mitchell. Goodbye, and, Naomi. Uh, goodbye, Naomi. Goodbye, Mr. Mitchell. Bye, Naomi. Oh, Aunt Mandy, is dinner ready? Yes, ma'am, it sure is. And I got chicken salad, deviled eggs, potato chips, pickle, angel food cake, and iced coffee. Ain't that scrumptious? That sounds delicious. But put the one-a-day vitamin bottle on the table. Yes, too often meals that we like to eat are short on vitamins. Lack of vitamins in your food causes you to feel tired and run down. But here's how you can be sure of your vitamins. Take one one-a-day brand multiple vitamin capsule every day. Lack of vitamins can make you nervous and irritable. Take one one-a-day brand multiple vitamin capsule every day. At your drugstore, look for the figure one on the blue packet. Take one one-a-day brand multiple vitamin capsule every day. to the Quiz Kids each week and listen to Alka-Seltzer's News of the World every Monday through Friday on most of the NBC stations. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>